Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on Blue. Do a little bit of a harvest here, see what he's doing, and then feed him up. Let me get you put down, and we will get started. So I have been coming in here without you guys, and doing a little bit of a harvest at a time, um, and seeing how things are progressing. I am still seeing a lot of seeds, and uh, you know, pieces of avocado that are probably a year old. Um, but let me go ahead and start doing a little bit of a harvest here and we'll see what we get. I am using the one quarter inch uh, screen here. This does allow the cocoons to go through which I have been capturing in my worm nursery. Um, but it does have most of the worms and the food stay on the top. So I'm taking about two handfuls and putting it in the sifter and just give it a shimmy shake here and you can see the worms stay on top as do any of the uh, larger uncomposted items and I'm just going to put that back and do it again Less is more with these. Um, you can buy these uh, from the link below. Uh, they come in sets, or you can buy them sized individually. This is the quarter inch one. This is my favorite. I use it the most. Um, and then when I'm trying to get the cocoons out, I'll actually use the, the eighth inch one. So but you can see what we've got on top here. And if I waited for all of this to get finished composting, it would be years. So I'm content to just pull out some of it and uh, use this and also if I want to pull the cocoons out then I can pull the cocoons out of this. There's a cocoon right here on my thumbnail. So they do go through this screen uh, so if I want to capture them, I, I need to use the next smaller screen, which is this one, and then the cocoons will stay on top, but we're not going to do that right now. So a lot of people talk about food cardboard and things like that. Um, it does take longer to break down, but it does in fact break down. I'm picking out anything that I think might be plastic from windows or or something that something that I've fed them. So I try and take those out um, whenever I'm doing my sifting. Ideally, you don't put it in in the first place, but uh, you know, life happens, especially when you take donations from friends and family that, you know, um, maybe don't, they don't realize that things have plastic in them. All right, so we are going to dig in here and see how everybody's doing. This part has not been fed in months at this point. Normally you would think that the worms would all leave because there's no food, but I still have a few holdouts that stay at this end of the bin. Uh, for whatever reason, and they continue to work through all of the the compost here. And just like you saw, as I was sifting, not everything was finished. And you know, so of course there is stuff for them to eat still. I'm going to leave this far edge over here alone. That's where I've got my Florida avocados that I'm trying to get to uh, grow. Um, so we're going to leave that very far edge alone, but I am going to start moving things over, making room for more of the wedge. I'm going to take any big things like sticks and put them at the, at the beginning end. back you up a little bit more. We're getting into the transition part where we're still going to probably find food pieces. 
And when we do, we'll just put them at the leading edge of the wedge and they can continue on in the process however long it takes. I really don't usually take anything out um, unless it's not going to compost, like if it's plastic or, or something. Normally I will give things a chance uh, indefinitely. I figure they can keep cycling through and we can keep seeing what they're doing. You know, some people have corks or pumpkin stems that have probably been in there for years. Or in the case of this, I think this is part of a uh, corn cob. But they just keep going through the new iterations of the worm bin. And that's fine. I mean, if it was outside, I mean, if it was harvested and left outside, I mean, that would be fine too. Um, I just tend to move just the finished castings out to the garden or for my plants. Uh, that, that's my preference. A lot of people will take something like this and this is good enough and they use this in their garden and that's totally fine. It's not really a right wrong sort of a thing. It is a personal preference. Okay, now we're getting into the newer portions where you can see the old bedding. We might, I don't know if we'll get a worm ball or not, but let's have a look. Definitely getting into a higher concentration of worms at this point. This is a combination of the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers. I may have mentioned before, but um, this bin probably has about 12 to 15 pounds of compost worms in it. and so it does go through a lot of food pretty quickly. This is a banana stem, probably from a month or two ago. It's amazing what they can do. So this is some, you know, pretty recognizable bedding. So this is definitely going to be okay to, we're going to move that over. I don't see any huge food chunks and we're moving the food chunks down to that end. that can get across the line. It's getting a little wet down here at the bottom. You can tell this is wetter than I keep my bins usually. Usually with the wedge method here, anytime that I move it over this line, then I quit feeding it. Um, the portion that gets fed, you know, at this point, this is just slowly going to be worked on by the worms, and uh, it'll just continue on its path. And on this side of the line is where we do our new bedding and our new food. All right, let me switch you around here, and we'll take a look at the leading edge. All right, here we are. You can tell I trimmed up my avocado trees in the basement. So if you ever wonder where those sticks come from, um, it's because I'm trimming my bonsais or indoor plants and I uh, feed the worms the, the leavings. So this gets to be the new portion here. So I'm not sure where we're going to find the food. I did not remember to look at the video. But the sticks and stems, they do take on order of a year to break down. So if you don't have the patience for that kind of thing, don't drive yourself crazy putting them in your worm bin. If that's your goal is to see things go away quickly, put them in the outside compost. I personally don't care. I think it kind of helps um, keep air in the bin. Having large items to keep the castings and the bedding give it a little bit of more structure to keep air in because, you know, if there's no air, then the worms can't breathe because they are, in fact, breathing through their skin. All right, we've got to be getting close to the feeding here. Yeah, here's those apples that we had last time. So 
You can see even tiny little baby worms here. Good population. So they're still working on those apples. see where I landed things here. So more apple and I'm willing to bet this is where the melon was. I'm not seeing any melon rind here but the worm ball is an indication of where the melon was because that's definitely definitely their favorite. Melon and pumpkin they can get to it very quickly and therefore you are rewarded with a worm ball. Green tomato, still not making any progress there. Oh, there we go. Worm ball in the avocado and I just dumped most of it out. It was like this. So it's like a loaded baked potato, only it's an avocado. But lots of, still got the blue worms moving here. So it's, right now it is 67.8 Fahrenheit here in the basement. And look at that, that is just nothing but worms. They just like being all snuggly inside those avocado shells. And look, they're just, they've taken the avocado and they've made it into perfect castings. So who am I to screw up happiness? I'll put them back in there. Oh, I was wrong. We do have melon. Now that's also a nice worm ball. Look at that solid worms. It's probably a pound of worms in there. And you see what they've done to this uh, piece of melon. They've taken the outside of it. It was one of those golden honeydews or something like that. And they've just absolutely been having at it. So the worms are still nice and happy down here even though it's uh, below 70 in the basement now. The red wigglers and the European night crawlers don't stop, but I mean, that's a blue worm right there at the end of my finger here. Not you, you. You are a red wiggler. Move along. You're not part of this. But the, uh, the blue worms here, come on, buddy. Work with me. You're on camera. But uh, yeah, so the blue worm here, and you can tell, look how fast he's moving. You ever wonder, do I have a blue worm or is it a red wiggler? Um, aside from the fact that it has a flat clitellum, um, you can tell this, this dude is booking. So even at under 70, at 67 degrees, the blue worms are still doing fine in here, so that's good news. They usually ex experience something of a slowdown when they, they don't really go dormant, I don't think, but they don't eat as much when it's cold. Here's our apple. So as it stands right now, the apples are still here and the melon is still here, but I'm going to say they've made more progress on that melon. As I think 100% of the people predicted. All right, I'm not going to really mess with all of those uh, cuttings down there at the end. They're just all in a big pile. Um, we'll just look at that as something separate. But let me bury up their food again. Um, and then we will get them their food for today. Cover up that food. We don't want any bugs. All right. And courtesy of Cece, we have a surprise for the worms. I put the word out after, I don't remember who it was that put the poll out there, like, did your worms get any pumpkin? And I thought, oh my gosh, my poor worms. They don't have any pumpkins. So I put the word out and CC came through. She had some pumpkins left over in her garden. So let's get them some bedding. Uh, today they're gonna get some leaves and then they're gonna get some pumpkins. So this should be a good worm ball next time. Yep, so CC had some little ones that froze. 
So I'm going to cut them open and make sure they can get into it, but they've been partially frozen. So let's get another one. And for people who are looking at this going, this is not a pumpkin. These are heirloom pumpkins. You can look it up. Uh, it's a Dickinson pumpkin. And uh, they are not jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns are meant to be decorative. These are, you know, exclusively grown for food. Um, so that is what we're going to feed them. You see how much thicker they are. They almost look like a butternut squash, but they're not. They're not a butternut squash. They are, in fact, a pumpkin. So there we go. Two whole, well, they're little pumpkins. But this should be making them very happy. In fact, they'll probably ignore my experiment with my apples. Let me get them some more leaves. Okay, put some of the older castings on top, get the worms excited about what the new food is. All right, let's take a look and see how full blue is. All right, looks like we're going to have to work a little harder on that harvest portion over there. Everything from the line forward is pretty much brand new within the last month. Um, looking at the trees over here, as soon as they turn brown and, and officially die, you know, then we'll start incorporating them in. But until then, I'm just going to wait for them to dry out. Otherwise, they'll take forever, longer than forever. All right, guys, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.